scary. Street, we rented a warehouse, 
We were there for 16 years. Uh, we got through that building. We moved here uh, six and a half years ago. I bought this building from HISD. It's their frozen food warehouse. We gutted the whole thing and redid it. And then we added this space on uh, to house our new brew house, which we brought over from Bavaria, from the coast of the Lycanoc block, and also to house all of our fermenters. Uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we're still relatively small when you think of it in the, in the grand scheme of breweries. Like, you know, we did a little over 60,000 barrels of beer last year, which compares to AB InDev's and Andrew Bush InDev's uh, 100 million barrels. And that's just their U.S. production. So, we're small. What's our beer that's played? <laughs> we brew our beer according to the German beer purity law that Ryan Heitz gave us. He said you only use four ingredients in your beer malt, hop, yeast, and water. Notice in my absence rice and corn. We never use rice or corn in our beer, and we never use any additives. If you 
roast the ball at the end of the process, like a coffee bean, and you make black malt. And again, there's different types of black malt. Uh, we can give the beer a little bit more roasty flavor or a much darker color. Uh, we use just a little bit of what's called chocolate malt and ale wagger, which gives it that kind of hint of chocolate flavor to it. Uh, there's no actual chocolate in there, but it comes from the malt. Uh, we use a different black malt in Santa. And if you have Santa, you'll find that beer is very dark. It's real light body and easy to drink. So dark does not mean strong and heavy necessarily. Although it can. <laughs> <laughs> and we get into some of our vicious barrel beers. 12 or 13%. They'll get you there. <laughs> Hoses. 
step over them uh, until it touches them. All right, follow me. <laughs> I got to the last. I got to go down like the metal steps. Excuse me. A little bit bigger than. Uh, what's your hook? What's your? Eight. Either one. There's like one left. It's tiny. See, he wasn't a little tiny, was he? A little bit bigger. But we didn't even tour. We just like, we just stopped my glasses and... Oh, well, those don't do tours like this. This sounds like a tour during the weekend. Those little tiny ones that do tours like... It's like Austin Independent. They do tours like one day on Saturday. One tour. Where do you want to stand? Huh? Where do you want to stand? picture of like uh, all the silos there. Right Will you just point up? Alright, everybody can take a couple steps forward. I just showered, so that's cool. <laughs> ah. So we last left the work upstairs at the Whirlpool, uh, right under 212 degrees. We pump it out to a heat exchanger, cool the work down from 212 degrees down to somewhere between 72 and 48 degrees, depending on the beer that we're brewing. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we'll fill the fermenter up with the chilled work, add the yeast, and let the yeast go to work. And yeast are great critters. Life of the yeast is they eat sugar, give off CO2 and alcohol, and they replicate. The children's version, but there were some children. Uh, everybody finds it easier to remember those. If the yeast eat sugar, they pee alcohol, and they fart CO2. <laughs> Let's skip the replication discussion. But the world of beer, everything we love to drink is beer. And the, uh, there's two subgroups, ales and lagers. And the difference is the type of yeast. Ale yeast ferments at warmer temperatures, usually in the 65 to 70 degree range. Ale yeast will produce esters, it'll give the beer a little bit of fruitiness. Lagers come in at colder temperatures, usually in the 45 to 55 degree range. Uh, at those colder temperatures, the lager yeast won't produce those fruity esters. But they will produce the stress because it's cold, so they'll produce sulfur compounds, think burnt match. But then you age the lager, and those sulfur compounds break down and go away. Lager means to store in German. Most of our beers are ales, although uh, we seem to be adding more lagers to our lineup. Uh, traditionally, we've had summer pills and spring bock to seasonals as lagers, and now we've added five o'clock pills. Uh, fancy lawnmower beer is Kolsch, which is it's a, a German ale yeast that ferments down well below where most ale yeast will go dormant. But it's a little above lager temperature, so it's kind of in between. So, we use the coal sheath and lawnmower, also in Santa. Weed Whacker is the exact same recipe as lawnmower, except we ferment it with Bavarian hepabites and yeast instead of coal sheath. So you can taste those two beers side by side. It's called doing research, by the way. <laughs> we do a lot of research here. The beers will ferment for about a week. Uh, once the fermentation is done, We'll chill the beer down to about 31 degrees so the yeast all drops out. We'll then harvest yeast from the bottom of the tank and pitch it in the next batch of beer that uses the same yeast. We'll then let, then let the beers mature in condition for another week, several weeks, just depends on the beer. Most of our ales are two to four weeks in the tanks. Our lagers are six weeks, which is actually an unusually long time for lagers. Once we're done conditioning the beers, uh, we clarify them, which is done at the other end of the room, 
where we have a centrifuge and a filter. All of our beers go through the centrifuge. Most of our beers, but not all of them, go through the filter. Uh, we filter very loosely, over 10 times more porous than big brewers. The reason for that is the tighter you filter beer, the more body and flavor you strip from it, which is the opposite of what we want. We want body and flavor in our beer. <clears throat> from there it goes to the bright beer tanks, and from there it goes to the packaging, where we'll go in just a second. Uh, one question I often get is about our water. We get fine city of Houston water. Same stuff comes out of your taps, about 350 parts per million dissolved solids. And then we run it through our reverse osmosis and strip it from 350 parts per million down to about 0.5 ppm. So it's pretty much pure water. Then we actually add minerals back. So every one of our beers has its own water recipe because you actually need minerals in your water uh, to brew beer. So that's, this is our, the water plant. If you're wondering about cold liquor and hot liquor, we thought that was much cooler sounding than cold water and hot water. <laughs> Those are actually the terms in, uh, in the brewing world. I didn't come up with that. <laughs> All right, uh, follow me into the packaging hall. Go for it. Go over there.